Archetypes have been an important part of fighting games ever since they first gained a character select screen in Street Fighter 2. Even if you don't fully understand the idea of a Shoto, you probably know all about the more commonly discussed Grappler and Zoner. In the 30 plus years since Street Fighter 2, a lot has changed in fighting games and way, way more archetypes have sprung up out the woodwork. In this series, I want to talk about the ones we don't really have strict definitions for and pin down how they play, why you might play them, and most useful for you at home, how to play against them. This episode will be a slight departure from the previous ones and we're going to talk about a bit more of a conceptual archetype rather than a predefined one. The Boxer. The Boxer is fun because, at heart, these characters are designed to emulate the sport more than they are to be an archetype in fighting games. But because they work on a basis of our real world understanding of boxing, their strengths and weaknesses are instantly understandable and transferable between games and characters even though most boxing characters actually play pretty differently from one another. The cool factor in the fact that this descriptor works so well is that it still accurately will depict how we think about boxing in real life, even if, in-game, we are a boxer that can conjure fireballs. They designed these moves to coexist within a boxing moveset, rather than to operate the same as a typical fighting game projectile, specifically being present to allow or enforce approach, or to counter an attempt at zoning. There's as much room for varied combat styles in the boxing archetype as there is in the actual sport. You have in-fighters and out-fighters, dirty fighters and honest fighters, and an overall lack of below-the-belt attacks across all of these characters, but they have a really dominant position when they're in their dedicated range, which is at arm's length, on the floor and next to an opponent. Some characters are similar to the brawler and they repeatedly close the gap, whereas some boxers are more happy to stay rooted to the spot and fight at arm's length. However they fight though, it's very recognisably similar to known boxing strategy, both visually and in gameplay. They have to close the gap by moving in themselves, which puts them at risk during approach, but once they're in their dedicated range they aim to stick there and fight incredibly oppressively. Most of these characters relying on fast, difficult to read block strings and or good frame traps, with a general lack of high and low mix ups. Their lows are either dedicated parts of target combos or command moves that aren't usable while they're mid block string and they're only available as starters or straight hits. The thing that then really defines the boxer as being notably separate from other brutish physical attack based fighters that I've recently focused on is that boxers also inherently have really great close range defense. Inherent to boxing as a combat style, these characters can come with all sorts of sways, counters, turtle stances with auto blocking, a whole lot of different things that are really really strong defense tools, and it's generally not limited to just one of these things per character, and most of them will have at least two of the three. And these characters also have an odd habit of showing up in games where you can select moves before matches too. And the moves that you can select from tend to be matchup specific strong defense tools, or very very powerful offensive ones, which just help these close range powerhouses feel even more oppressive when they're in their zone and up in your face. This archetype is by default the brother archetype to many different archetypes. Some boxers are very clearly parts of or adjacent to the other heavy hitters and recent archetypes that I've covered, while some are kind of their own thing and a little bit hard to define outside of just being a boxer. There's a wide range of boxing characters, and while they're also adjacent and quite similar to characters based on things like MMA or Mai Tai, there's the caveat that there's a lot fewer characters based on those sports. Most of those characters tend to be designed a little more as fighting game archetypes first, rather than actual representatives of their sport at heart. MMA has a lot more grappling in reality than it does have dragon punches, and the optimal ranges and fighting styles of these characters can wildly differ to the stuff you'd see in a real fight. But I think that just lends greater focus and credence to the fact that boxing characters tend to stay a lot truer to the sport, and have the short range prowess that you'd expect. A little bit of a tough time getting in, but not as bad of a time as a grappler, and generally not as easy as a brawler but they're extremely oppressive once they're in your face, and they can be really hard to enforce close range pressure on too if you're a rushdown character. They're scary to be in range of by right of their fast, hard hitting and multifaceted tools, regardless of whether you're the aggressor or the defender in that scenario. Because of their prowess and short range fisticuffs, there are some characters who aren't really based on any sport at all that can be argued to play like boxers. But, you know, if you're watching at home, 
keep it realistic, people can get mad enough at Slayer as he is without having to argue whether or not he would also be heavyweight champ. This video is more specifically designed to cover who are professional boxers in universe and specifically designed to be such, and the way that they as characters are designed, rather than to just start introducing this terminology to characters who you could kind of go either way on, and bothering people a lot more than when Kazuya was called a Shoto for about a week. So how do you play these guys well? Well, as the whole boxing motif might imply, you have to learn to be scary in your optimum range. You're relying purely on strike as these characters. Command grabs are on the rare side, and when they do exist, they're often heavily limited to their uses, and they aren't just free health bar nukes like they normally would be in another character. So purely on strike, there are three main techniques that you can focus on. Block strings, frame traps, and callouts. The first two are interlinked, and they're on the easier side. Block strings are just chains of moves that you can link into each other in a non-interruptible way while your opponent is blocking. And frame traps are ways that you can throw a move after an opponent's finished blocking to catch them attempting to take their turn back. Think of this scenario as like a combo but for while someone's blocking, rather than a combo when you actually hit them. At time of writing, I don't actually have a dedicated video on just frame trapping as a skill, but rest assured one will be coming in the near future. I do want to have videos finished on all the core fighting game skills explained simply and clearly for beginners for when Street Fighter 6 arrives. However, my how to combo video does go into this in better detail if you need to see something like that, and the theory behind coming up with both combos and block strings is pretty interchangeable. Basically, only certain routes are viable for every character's moves. Only some moves can be special cancelled, and only some moves link into each other. It's almost never the case that light punch combos into heavy punch in any game, and the combo routes after light buttons are only ever a couple buttons long in the majority of games. Once you learn what you can cancel and what it can be cancelled into, you can then start formulating block strings and combos pretty easily. You just end your block strings in either something safe or a frame trap. Meanwhile for combos, you just kind of do whatever does the most damage, and it's a lot simpler than figuring out how to safely end block strings or coming up with your own frame traps. Callouts, however, are something that I haven't really covered at all. They're a core concept of the mind game part of fighting games, and they can be separated into two categories, reactions and reads. Some moves can always be countered on reaction, whereas some cannot. And as a result of this, sometimes you're going to have to gear up and just prepare to assume whatever your opponent's going to be doing, and hope that you guess right. Reading your opponent and predicting accurately is a very difficult skill, and I'll cover it in a lot more depth at a later date, but it can be alleviated with a lot of character matchup training. Players who carry characters like Ed and Balrog to the very highest level of competition put in some truly intense levels of practice against certain characters and figuring out cues that work for them to react to very specific moves with very specific actions. And that brings me quite tidily to who plays these characters, because almost without fail, these guys are character specialists. They tend to only play this one character, and if they ever migrate to someone else, it's only because they love the complexity that that character brings. It's very much a come for the swag, stay for the title kind of deal with these players, where what first rope them in can often vary, but if they really stick to these characters and learn to play them at a competitive level, then they just truly love something about the way the character plays. Whether it's one move, or the whole stick and move boxing fantasy that's going on, they really wind up glued to the fighting style almost permanently. They rarely ever migrate to something different unless they crave an even deeper version of this character specific playstyle of the boxer, because much like in real life, the boxer has to play very differently match up to match up. Even ones who rely on a single move, they then have totally different windows for its use and conditions for its use versus any specific character on the roster. And the more variety focused characters like Steve Fox can look like a totally different character when they're played by someone else or against someone else. This really showcases again just how tied to the sport these characters are. They have a very, very wide range of properties across their various punches and sways and their very defensive and offensive options, which can often mean players can lean towards either using a different half of the kit or choose different options for different situations. 
and that just leaves us with the question, how exactly do you play against them? Well, if you're lucky enough, Range Advantage can just play the game for you, since getting in is the toughest part of these characters' game plan, but no one's going to be that fortunate the whole matchup, and a lot of characters will not have that range advantage. And the hard part is both pressuring them and being pressured by them. Sadly, this leaves us to the beautiful, mystical world of knowing frame data, because you're either going to have to know what's unsafe to block, or what's really scary for the boxer to whiff into the open air. Recovery on these guys' whiffed attacks can often be appalling. They're actually really terrible at the whole walling off space thing that bullies do, since most boxing normals have quite low active frame counts and a large, long duration recovery hitbox. Also, almost all of these guys have an uppercut that is truly appalling to miss, like a cartoonishly bad, jaw drops to floor, eyes pop out of skull level of punishing to whiff move. These uppercuts can either be very restrictive anti-airs, they can only be used at a very specific angle and range, and will more often whiff or trade with the opponent than hit outright, or they're not anti-airs at all and they're instead purely intended as launchers. But these moves, if baited out, are pretty much just instant death for the boxer. Playing a good air to ground game is very 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 strong against the boxer, because it's probably their weakest trait. Aerial attacks are almost none for the vast, vast majority of these characters, since they're pretty much dedicated to boxing on the floor. Obviously you can't just play the game by just jumping at them, but if you keep a varied offense and mix up between grounded and aerial approaches, you should be able to swing things in your favor one way or another. And that's going to be it for the boxer. I had a lot of fun covering these guys, as well as making the What is an Archetype video I released just yesterday. If you haven't seen that, there's a link on screen that you can click right now to go watch it. But for now, I'm going to take a well-deserved break for a few days while I decide what to put on the poll for the next Archetype Archive and get cracking on the Shoto video I'm going to be doing for next month. If you want a chance for an Archetype you want to be covered to feature on this poll, sound off loud as you can in the comments below. And to participate in these polls, you can join my membership on YouTube or on Patreon for access to new videos early, polls, and even a shout-out at the end of each video. If you'd like to do your part to support me without spending your precious CSGO case money, anything helps, whether it's liking and subscribing to the channel, or even just sharing the video with a friend on Discord. That's going to be all for this video, and as always, I'm just going to leave you all by saying, stay safe.